All right, so recently I made a video about the Ambernic RG35XXSP, which was pretty much my first impressions video of the device, my initial review. I'm gonna call it from now on the Ambernic SP for obvious reasons, the titles are just way too long on these devices. But anyway, during that video I was talking about how much I love the device. It's awesome. I mean, it reminds me a lot, obviously, of the Game Boy Advance SP, which was one of my favorite handhelds growing up. It's what I put probably the most amount of hours playing as a child as far as handheld devices go and the device looks pretty much exactly like it buttons are all in the kind of the same place it's a little bit different for you know reasons of modernizing it and whatnot but it gives you that nostalgic feel so it's an awesome device now in that video I did talk about the stock firmware and during that video I did talk about how the stock firmware is pretty much okay I mean you can get by playing it and I stand by that. I think if you're someone that just wants to buy this device, start playing it right away, you can boot up that stock firmware and just start playing games and it'll do just fine. In fact, it runs really well. And if there weren't other options, I would still be happy with the device as is. However, there is something called MuOS or MuOS or MuOS. I've heard it pronounced so many different ways. I'm gonna go with MuOS <laughs> for the heck of it. And if I'm wrong, Whatever, you can call me out in the comments. But anyway, the Moo OS is much better option than the stock OS, and I highly recommend you install it. It really makes the Ambernic SP shine. It kind of reminds me about how the Miu Mini Plus functions with Onion OS and how great that OS is for the device. It's really meant for it. It has a strong backing from a team that's developing it. It's got a strong community base. It's got all these custom themes that you can put on it, and it really just fits snugly into that device. As weird as that sounds for an OS, I don't think anyone's ever described it that way. But anyway, that's how I feel about Moo OS for the Ambernic SP. So one thing I mentioned is the themes. The themes are amazing on it. And there's so many options to pick from. There's this GitHub page that I'll link to in the description with a ton of theme options on it. And then there's also this Discord server with even more options with people constantly producing new themes. It's just so many to choose from. It's honestly quite overwhelming. There are all kinds of quality of life features which are amazing for this device. And there's one in particular that if you like retro achievements, you're really gonna like this feature. I'll make sure to get to that later in this video. But anyway, this custom firmware is amazing and it really makes me like the Ambernic SP even more. Let's get right into it. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the setup and then we'll talk about all the features that I've used and just overall what I think about Moo OS. Setting up this custom firmware is really not that bad. I get comments all the time that people think they aren't tech savvy enough to do it, but I challenge you to give it a try, and I think you'll realize that it's easier than you think. First, you want a branded SD card. I used the 64 gigabyte one. The only reason why I used the 64 gigabyte one is because I had extras lying around. I didn't want to buy a bigger one, but honestly, I'm running out of room on this thing now, so you'll want a larger card in my opinion. I'd splurge for like a 128 gigabyte one. Probably don't need a 256, that might be overkill. If you end up using Portmaster, which we'll talk about later in this video, that can really suck up some of the space out of those SD cards. Once you have your card, go to Moo OS's website. On the main page, you can click on the download here button or click on the release tab in current. There is an update called Baked Beans, but for now, we're just gonna install Refried Beans. You need to install that anyway in order to get Baked Beans. On the download page, click on the RG35XX sploosh, and you'll see the zip file here for Moo OS Refried. Unzip that file after you download it, of course, and reveal your Moo OS image file. Now, we're gonna have to flash our SD card. Plug your SD card into your computer. Make sure you use a good quality SD card reader. I like this one from Anchor. Connects via USB-C for Mac users or people with USB-C ports. I'll also link to the USB one, and then you can also get this one that connects to both. To flash your SD card, you'll need a program. For PC, I recommend using Rufus, but if you are using a Mac like I'm using, you'll need to use a different one. Apparently, this won't work with Belena Etcher, which is a common one that I've used in the past. At least that's what I've been told, but you can use Raspberry Pi, and I'll show you how. Go to Raspberry Pi's website, click on software, then download for Mac OS. Once Raspberry Pi is up and running, click on Choose OS, scroll down to Use Custom, select the Moo OS image file we made, then click Choose Storage. If you don't have anything else connected to your Mac, you should only see one option here. It'll show you the size, which should be close to the size of the SD card you purchase. 
this is what mine looked like. Just make sure you aren't flashing anything else because it will delete everything on that storage device. Click right and wait for Raspberry Pi to flash that card. It should prompt you to take out your SD card. Go ahead and do that. Remove your old stock SD card from the Ambernig SP. Put that somewhere safe. You're not going to want to lose it because maybe in the future you might want to try out the stock firmware or at the very least get your BIOS files off of it. Plug the new SD card in. Once you boot it up, you'll be asked which Ambernic device you are using. This is the SP, obviously. Don't select any of the other ones. Then you'll start installing MooOS. This part takes a long time, but they do have all these little funny lines to keep you entertained. Also, this little beeping noise kind of reminds me of waiting in line for Mission Space at Magic Kingdom at Disney World for some reason. Once installed, you'll be asked about your time zone, and then you put in some more information. At this screen, you'll want to hit B instead of A, just FYI, that kind of tripped me up. Once Moo OS is booted up, go ahead and shut down. Remove the SD card and add all your favorite ROMs. To do that, plug your SD card back into your computer, open up the card on your computer. If you're using a PC, which you probably are, the drive might be hidden from you. If that happens, check out Joey's Retro Handheld's guide on this because he explains what to do in that case. When you open up your SD card files, you'll see a folder called ROMs. Go there. The folder will be empty. Here you'll create a folder for each system. These folders you create will be called the same on your actual Ambernic SP. So copy all your games over, eject your SD card, and put that sucker back in your Ambernic SP. Actually, hold on. Before you plug that SD card back in your SP, let's get some custom themes going. Because at this point, you're probably way too excited about the potential themes that you could put on your Moo OS without even considering playing games. So let's do that. I'll link to this GitHub page that has all these themes. You can also check out their Discord server, which is on the Moo OS website. The Discord server has even more themes. On the GitHub page, you want to go to this option here where you can download every single theme. It'll make a zip file. Just leave it as a zip file. Take that zip file, go to your SD card, and then under archive, put that zip file right in there. And that's it. Now, let's take out our SD card and put it into our Ambernic SP. Once you've got your Ambernic SP booted up, go to apps and then archive manager, and there you'll see the zip file that we put there. All you gotta do is extract it, and boom, all the themes are now on your Ambernic SP. Isn't that just amazing? I freaking love these themes. So great. The sleep mode works really well with MooOS, and with the latest update, you can actually put the device into sleep mode by closing the clamshell, which is important because we want our clamshell clamming it up and going to sleep when we close its little shell. Anyway, this still drains the battery. You will need to turn on the sleep shutdown option in the general settings to save battery. This actually shuts down the system after a certain amount of time in sleep mode. There isn't a quick shutdown feature like there was in the stock OS. Basically, what that feature did is when you turned off the device in a game, it would create a save, and then when you boot back up the system, it'll go back into that game where you left off with that save. Anyway, there is some options that you can change to basically make this feature the same. So first, enter into RetroArch's menu from a game, hit B and go to settings, then saving, then turn on auto save state and load state. This basically means that when you quit a game, it will create a save. When you go back into the game, it will load that same save. Second, go back to the quick menu, click overrides, and then save core overrides to save those settings for every game. Third, go to MooOS menu, click configuration, go to general settings, and then on device startup, select resume game. Basically, what we've done here is that when you're playing a game and you put it into sleep mode and then the certain amount of minutes go by and your device turns off, it'll create a little save state for you before the game actually shuts off and turns off your SP. Then when you open up your SP, turn it back on, it'll load back into the last game that you were playing, and since we have the auto load feature, it'll go right back to where you left off when you turned it off. Now, on device startup options, you'll notice that there is an option for last game and resume game. Basically, the only difference here is that the last game will always go to the last game, and resume game will only go to the last game if your device shuts down after going into sleep mode. Whatever your preference is, just go with that. You do you. I did resume game, but you do you. For all you retro achievement lovers out there, and you know who you are, Moo OS has an option that honestly makes this OS worth it just for that one option. It's like that quality of life feature I've always been waiting for for a very, very long, long time. If you go into configuration, then general settings, and then advanced settings, you'll notice at the very bottom this little option here that says retro arc network weights. Now what could that mean? 
Well, here's a little context. In the past, when I boot up RetroArch, when I just turned on the device and the internet hadn't really connected yet, I would load the game still, but the internet wouldn't be connected, so I wouldn't log into Retro Achievements, and basically I would have to quit the game, wait for the internet to reconnect, and then go back into the game so that Retro Achievements would connect and keep track of my achievements. Well, this RetroArch network wake, what it does is basically doesn't boot the game until your network is connected, so you avoid this issue. It's very, very convenient. And the cool thing is that even when your device is off and you boot it on, your device won't actually boot on until the internet is connected, and then it'll still go into your game. It's really, really handy, and I love this feature so much. Important note here, by default you'll notice that the LED indicator light is turned off when you enter into a game. No problema, we can fix this. Just go to configuration, then general settings, then advanced settings, and then enable LED during play. I don't know why they shut this off. Obviously we wanna see that little green light while we're playing our games. Another neat little feature of the Ambernic SP is being able to connect to your Ambernic SP from your web browser on your computer so that you could do stuff like add or remove ROM files. To do that, go to config, web services, enable SFTP plus file browser. Then from there, you want to get your device's IP address, and to do that, just go to the Wi-Fi section, and it'll be listed right there. Put that IP address into your web browser, then colon 9090. That'll bring you to the Moo's web browser page. The password and username is actually both Moo OS, all lowercase. Then you'll be able to access your Ambernic SP from your web browser. Pretty cool, honestly. All right, so while recording and editing for this video, this random bug happened with MooOS. After I switched some settings, the bug started, and basically what would happen is that the screen would go black at these very specific times. It would happen when I was starting MooOS, when I was going into the advanced settings in config, and then when I was leaving the settings in config. The screen would just go black and unresponsive. To get out of that, I would have to close the clamshell and open it back up, and then it would work fine. Really weird issue, it maybe had something to do with the system thinking that I had closed the device when I haven't. Looked up some solutions online and people basically just said to just reflash MooOS to fix the issue. There are other bugs like these. But uh, also someone said that I could maybe clean the magnet sensors in the system itself. Maybe that was the issue. Basically what I ended up doing was I just like turned it off a few times doing different methods. Like I would long hold the power button I would shut it down through the system itself, and I would also just let it shut down in the sleep function. And after doing that a few times, it randomly just started working again, and I haven't had that issue since. So I just bring this up just in case, you know, this happens to you or, you know, just so that you know that there are some bugs with MooOS that can happen, and it just has to do with the OS itself. You can reflash it, or you could just do what I do and just restart it a few times and hope that it works. So before I wrap up this video, I did want to briefly touch on Portmaster. MooOS does have Portmaster, and if you're not sure what Portmaster is, it's basically just a way to play PC ports on Linux-based devices. There's a large library of ports available, games like Stardew Valley and Half-Life, and all you need to do is install them on MooOS, and then make sure you copy over the files from your actual games on like your Steam account or your GOG account, just so that they know that you own the game. And that's it. You can now play games like Stardew Valley on your Ambernic SP, and that's just so cool. Moo OS made the Ambernic SP into an even more awesome blossom, extra awesome kind of console. I was so excited to start playing games on this thing after setting all these settings up. There are some things I missed, I'm sure, but there are plenty of other guides out there if you are curious. One feature you might want to look into is syncing. You can sync your saves between other handhelds, which is obviously great for cross-platform progression. I don't care about this feature all too much, but I figured I should mention it. Anyway, time to get back into gaming. I hope you enjoyed this video on Moo OS. After I put in about 100 hours of gameplay on this device, I'll make sure to give you my full-fledged, in-depth review on the Ambernic SP, which is going to be awesome, so definitely make sure you're subscribed and get notified by that. Anyway, see you later, everyone. Bye.